Welcome to Toastmaster Time, the show that's got everybody talking. My name is James Jeffley, and I'm excited to be the host for this edition of Toastmaster Time. Like in a regular Toastmasters club meeting, we will have prepared speeches, followed by an evaluation to give our speakers important information to grow. Tonight we have our very own evaluator and a veteran of the show, Adrian Chofor. Adrian, welcome back to Toastmaster Time. Thanks, James. I'm so happy to be back with you guys again today. So for today's show, we have two seasoned speakers. Steve today, which is no stranger to our district, our immediate past district director, is going to give a speech. And also, new to Toastmasters, is Kimmy Avery. And she will deliver a speech here on our show. So we're very happy to have both of our speakers, and we're in for an exciting show. It sounds like a great show, and I'm looking forward to hearing not only our speakers, but also your evaluation of their performance today. Thank you. At this time, I'd like to introduce our first speaker to the show, Mr. Steve Today. Steve, welcome to Toastmaster Time. Hello, James. Now, this is not your first time on the show. I've been on it before. You've been on it before. Right. And you're our uh, past district director for District 57. That's right. How has your experience in Toastmasters, and especially in leadership, helped you out in the real world in your profession? Oh boy, it's helped me out in a lot of different ways. Mm -hmm. uh, it helped me with evaluations. It mm -hmm. helped me learn how to give and receive evaluations. Mm -hmm. And then the leadership roles in particular taught me a lot about thinking on my feet. Mm -hmm. uh, when good things are happening or during a time of crisis, mm -hmm. being able to think on my feet has, helped, has been a good skill to build. And those are things that we help people learn here in Toastmasters. So it's not just about overcoming your fear of public speaking or learning how to give a good speech. It's critical thinking, leadership skills, things like that. That's right. Those right. are the value-added services. Absolutely. What clubs are you a member of? I'm a member of three clubs. I'm a member of Island City Toastmasters in Alameda. Mm -hmm. I'm a member of Alameda Tongue Twisters mm -hmm. and then Toastmasters Leadership Club in Oakland. What, is that enough? That's enough. That keeps me busy. <laughs> and how long have you been in Toastmasters now? I joined Island City Toastmasters in 2008, so it's been about nine years. About nine years. Right. That's great. Well, are you ready to give your speech? Yes, I am. I'm looking forward to it. We'll give you a few moments to prepare, and I'll tell our audience a little bit more about what's in store. Terrific. Thank you, James. In Toastmasters, we have our members go through what are called pathways, and they're pathways to help them learn how to improve their speaking skills in certain areas. Some of the paths include projects that emphasize gestures, vocal variety, some are focused on entertaining, some are focused on persuading or giving technical presentations. Whatever you're interested in professionally, there's a pathway for you. And as people give their speeches, we invite our club members to give evaluations about their speaking performance. And tonight is no different. I'd like to welcome back to the show our very own evaluator, Adrian Chofor. Adrian, welcome back. Thanks, James. Good to be back. So tell us about Steve's speech. What's his project and what are you looking for? Well, Steve is working from the persuasive influence pathway. Mm -hmm. And his speech today is going to be inspire your audience. Ah. So we're going to look for inspirational content, one that moves the audience, mm -hmm. and it's well organized and has a strong delivery. Wonderful. Well, I look forward to his speech and I look forward to your comments about it. Thank you. As our society becomes more polarized, we're losing our ability to communicate, particularly with people with whom we disagree. Steve's goal for this speech is to inspire the audience to work to find common ground. Steve today, common ground, common ground, Steve today. Have you ever had somebody call you a fascist or a socialist? and have the conversation move forward in a positive direction? Probably not. That kind of language, that kind of name calling, pretty much puts a kibosh on any kind of positive communication. We live in a country that is populated by over 325 million people. The world is populated by over 7 billion people, yet our egos are so big that we believe our opinions to be the only ones that are valid. Our egos are so fragile that when somebody merely disagrees with us on an issue or has the audacity 
to vote differently than us for a candidate, we are incredibly inf offended. We are so offended that the first thing we do is grab our device, or if our laptop and terminal are close by, we start typing. And we type the most clever, angry message we can, totally ridiculing the offending party. That does two things. The first thing it does is it allows us to get it off our chest, and it allows us to get it off our chest in a way to where we don't actually have to confront the person, and we don't actually have to defend our views. The best part of it is we've got a lot of friends that agree with us, and those friends are going to see what we posted, they're going to either like it, or they're going to put a positive comment on it, and we're going to feel really good. There's a tragedy to all that, though. We are losing our ability to engage in debate. We are losing our ability to learn from disagreements by finding the nuances of somebody's argument. The worst part is, day by day, we are severing our relationship with half of our fellow citizens. Let me say that again. Day by day, we are severing our relationship with half of our fellow citizens. It doesn't have to be that way. John Fry is the president of Drexel University. He studied this issue, and he suggests that people spend less time on social media and more time talking with each other face to face. Liberals and conservatives can learn a lot from each other just by hearing each other out and hearing each other's arguments. Empathy and respect will go a long ways to bridging our current political divide. I'm going to give you a couple of things to do after this show. The first thing I'd like you to do is I'd like you to go to YouTube. I know I was talking about the evils of social media, but if you go to YouTube and you type in President Obama delivering the eulogy at Senator Kennedy's memorial service, and then type in the name Orrin Hatch, you'll find something interesting. You will find that President Obama talks about the example those two senators set, set in having a bipartisan relationship, which, if you followed Senator Kennedy and Senator Hatch, was amazing because they are just two totally different people. One's very conservative, one is very liberal, yet they were able to disagree on the issues they were passionate about, but they were able to find common ground. And as it ended up, they were better for it, and the country was better for it. Now, after you watch the video, I'd like you to look at your own life. Because although I cited President Obama and then Senators Kennedy and Hatch, the solutions aren't going to come from Washington. It starts with us. And I want you to think about your neighborhood, the neighborhood across the street from you that every election season has a sign up you don't like. And you look at that neighbor and you look at them kind of funny because they're wrong. Well, the fact of the matter is, you never know what you and that neighbor have in common. And that neighbor might be the one that on the day it's raining and your kids are locked out of the house, that might be the safe house they go into until you get home from work. But that's not going to be the house they go into if you and your neighbor are calling each other radical or ideologue. That neighbor might also be the one that helps you when you're late for work, on the day when you're going to get fired if you're late again. Again, you won't get that help if your neighbor and you are calling each other names. So it starts with us. And as my Toastmasters friends said this morning, we're going to have our differences, but we should respect our differences while we appreciate 
what we have in common. Mr. Toastmaster. Well, that was certainly moving for me. What did you think about Steve's speech, Adrian? I think in the, the times that we're living in, we need to have more speeches like Steve. It was yes. definitely relevant. It was a strong opening. Mm -hmm. It caught my attention. Mm -hmm. No one likes name calling. Right. And hearing fascist, socialists, we're just talking about our differences and not what our similarities are, our common ground. So right. this was a very good speech at this time. I really enjoyed listening to it, and he had persuasive arguments throughout his speech. Very much so. I really appreciated um, how he raised these issues in a very thoughtful way. You know, mm -hmm. here's some things you can do. Focus on what we have in common rather than what divides us. Let's mm -hmm. get back to civil discourse rather than just you know, name calling behind a terminal, right. right? Engage your neighbors in dialogue. Get off the social media and let's let's get back to human connection and find out what we have in common. And I especially like the reference to uh, Senator Kennedy and Senator Hatch's work together because they were very diametrically opposed except they didn't stay in their camps. They found right. some space in the middle where they could agree about some things and get some work done for the benefit of the country. Right, I agree with that as well. Also the point that uh, Steve brought out about day by day, people severing relationships with half of our citizens. Right. Again, uh, separating each other by words without actually coming together and overcoming those differences. And that was, I'm happy he used that example about the senators mm -hmm. and how they did that. Exactly. And if two polarized senators can come together to do good work, well, we can come together to do good work too. Absolutely. So right now, we're going to take a short break. You're watching Toastmaster Time. We'll be right back. Name an effective political leader in history who couldn't speak well. Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. There aren't any. Because when it comes to a disease... Freedom like requires rest, leadership, no and leadership requires parties. oratory. You have to speak to be heard. I have a dream. It's all about personal growth and guts. Never give in. Never, never, never. Welcome back to Toastmaster Time, the show that's got everybody talking. I'm James Jeffley, the host for this edition of Toastmaster Time, and I'm thrilled to invite our next guest to the show, Kimmy Avery. Kimmy, welcome to Toastmaster Time. I'm so pleased to be here with you. We've met somewhere before, haven't we? We have at the amazing Heart to Heart. To heart. <laughs> the members of the same club. That's right. And how long have you been a member of Toastmasters? Five months. Just five, just five months, yeah. Wow. And so what brought you to Toastmasters? Well, uh, my mastermind buddy actually sort of twisted my arm a little bit, mm. and she would kept hinting, well, you know, you'd really get a lot out of Toastmasters. Mm. And I, I came from speaking where, or came to speaking because it was important to get my message out, not because I said, oh, I want to be center stage. Right. And so I hesitated and I hesitated, and I thought that Toastmasters was really critical. Mm. And I was a little scared. But it's totally not, and I love it, yeah. so I'm really happy to be here. <laughs> Wonderful. What's been the biggest benefit so far to you uh, from Toastmasters as it relates to your work in the world? Well, I speak to engage clients. Mm -hmm. I, speech, I speak to motivate and inspire people to have better relationships. Mm -hmm. And if I just have a website, it's sort of static. There's no movement. and. In order to make the impact that I want to make in people's lives, mm -hmm. I have to be out in the world doing that. And that's really what you talk about yeah. is that kind of direct communication with yeah. each other, yeah. right? Are you ready to give your speech? Yeah. I'm ready to hear okay. it. <laughs> we'll give you a few moments to prepare. In okay. the meantime, I'll tell our audience a little bit more about Toastmasters. Sounds great. Thanks. Toastmasters is a global organization that helps people improve their public speaking skills as well as their leadership skills. 
We have about 350,000 members in over 16,000 clubs in 141 countries around the world. So if you're someone who wants to get over your fear of public speaking or develop better platform skills or leadership skills, you can find a Toastmasters club in your backyard. And I'd like to welcome back to this backyard our evaluator, Adrian Chofor. Adrian, welcome back. Hey there again. So what Tell us a little bit about Kimmy's project and what are you looking for? Sure. So Kimmy is working on the presentation Mastery Path. Okay. And her project is Effective Body Language. Ah. So what I'll be looking for is just that, a strong delivery mm -hmm. supported by effective gestures. Right. Facial expressions, body, body movements, right. all of that. All of that. Wonderful. I look forward to your comments. Thank you. Kimmy says 90% of relationship challenges stem from misunderstandings between men and women. And this has become more challenging in the last 40 years as our expectations have been changing. It's time to put away any assumptions that we have about men and women and how they're supposed to be and choose instead to be, as she says, voraciously curious so that we can create the new partnership paradigm. Kimmy Avery, Designing Sexy Communication, Designing Sexy Communication, Kimmy Avery. Thank you, Toastmaster. The room is silent. Mary and George are on opposite sides of the room again after another blowout argument. Mary is heartbroken and she cannot imagine what, how to save her marriage. She doesn't know how to tell George what she needs because he doesn't seem to care, doesn't seem to want to listen, and she's convinced that he doesn't love her. And George, all he wants to do is make her happy. He doesn't know how to win with her. And it breaks his heart to see her so sad, and it breaks his heart to see and hear her say that she wants to leave. Have you ever experienced a moment like that? Would you like to have fewer moments like that in your life? Yeah. My name is Kimmy Avery, and welcome to Designing Sexy Communication. I'm a relationship navigation specialist, and I've been studying love and relationships my entire life. I'm married to a great guy named Art, and I'm 50 years old. I have two stepkids, and we get to travel the world doing amazing things. And I get to travel the world and do my work coaching people, men and women, to have great relationships. And it wasn't always like that. There were years when I couldn't figure out how to make a relationship work. I dated a lot of great men. I studied communications. I'm an NLP health certified master practitioner and trainer. I've got a master's in counseling psychology and a bachelor's in family studies, and I still couldn't make a relationship work. I watched two men I was deeply in love with marry other women. I was their buddy, and I was really confused. And then when I turned 36, I started studying about men from a masculine perspective, and it changed everything for me literally everything. It rewrote my entire history. And I learned that men won't stick around if they're not needed. I had no idea. So all the times, I actually had a t-shirt that my brothers had given me. It said, a woman needs a man like a fish needs a bicycle. And we thought it was hilarious. And all the guys who said to me that I was dating, oh, Kimmy, I need you. I said, you don't need me. You're a strong man. You don't need me. We want to be with me. And then they went off to be with somebody else. And I was alone, and I was really confused. I also learned that men love to provide and protect the people that they claim are theirs. Really? The first day I heard that, I had to pick my jaw up off the floor. I had been conditioned to be, be a strong, powerful woman. I went to girls' boarding school and women's college. I wasn't supposed to need anybody. I was supposed to have it all together, and it wasn't working. So today I'm going to talk about what I work with my clients on. I have programs that I help men and women to understand each other better, and that's what I'm going to bring you today. 
And there are ways that we communicate that are not sexy, and then there are ways that we communicate that are sexy. One of the things that happens is that women typically look at men as hairier, misbehaving versions of ourselves. They're either doing things we would never do, or not doing the things we absolutely would do, and we're frustrated, or angry, or exasperated, or just out of our mind wanting him to figure out like why he's wrong. And then, women, and then men typically look at women as smaller, emotionally indulgent versions of themselves. And so both of these people over here, men and women, aren't able to communicate clearly. 90% of relationship challenges stem from misunderstandings about the opposite sex. Designing sexy communication is all about learning about the opposite sex so that you can navigate that experience. So I've got three points that I want to give you. And the first is choose to be curious instead of furious. Choose to be curious about that person in front of you. And I can say it's men and women, but the truth is that it's everyone on the planet that we need to be curious about. So that's point number one. Point number two is choose to learn about the people around you. Choose to understand about masculine and feminine dynamics so that you can create partnership. And number three is create a new beginning by learning to navigate that experience with the opposite sex. Learning to create that partnership that you really desire. Because we're so different, actually, men and women are so different that we'd be better off if we actually spoke different languages because then we wouldn't think we were communicating. So I invite you to take the next step. I invite you to get curious. I invite you to notice any time that you're upset and say, oh, okay, I'm going to pause and learn about the other person. Understand where they're coming from. And then I'm going to choose to learn about men and women, myself and the people around me. And then I'm going to learn to navigate those. I'm curious, what is your next step? Thank you. Wow, we've heard two great speakers give two great speeches tonight, both about bringing people together, right? Bridging Steve in gaps. a broader sense and Kimmy in in a more intimate relationship sense. Exactly. What did you think about her speech as it relates to her project? So she was working on effective body language, which mm -hmm. she, she, she carried that quite well. She, her use of space, mm -hmm. we have this a small space here in right. the studio, right. and she covered it so well, right. actually moving from side to side at the beginning and mm -hmm. just, uh, just relaying the distance between the two uh, marriage partners. Right. And then the way she gestured throughout her speech, mm -hmm. drawing the audience in, uh, her delivery, I really enjoyed it. There was a fun, passionate side of it uh, right. to her delivery. Well done with gestures. Right, and, and vocal variety as yes, well. Yes, right? She highlighted the points that she wanted and, and she brought it up, she brought it down, varied the pace, uh, very animated without being overdone. Right. right? I thought she struck a, a great balance with all of her body movements and vocalizations. You know, th these are very important topics because, you know, whether it's, it's political divisions or ideologies or religious ideologies or just the differences between men and women and how we right. see each other. I love where she said that, you know, women often view men as hairier, uh, uh, versions. Uh, poorly behaved versions of themselves <laughs> and men right. view women as, as, you know, smaller, uh, more emotionally <laughs> indulgent. And so, I, yeah, but great, great analogies from both And speakers. leading to frustration and exasperation. But I exactly. love the verbal gem about cur being curious over furious. Exactly. That was great. Oh, yeah. It's time for another break. That's good. You've been watching Toastmaster Time. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Name an effective political leader in history who couldn't speak well. Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. There aren't any. 
Because when it comes to a disease... Freedom like requires this, leadership, no and leadership requires oratory. You have to speak to be heard. I have a dream. It's all about personal growth and guts. Never give in. Never, never, never. Welcome back to Toastmaster Time, the show that's got everybody talking. I'm James Jeffley, the host for this edition of Toastmaster Time. I'm here with Adrian Chauffeur, our evaluator. So some final thoughts about these speakers and speeches we've heard tonight. Well, I was really impressed with both speakers. Mm -hmm. I'm still amazed by the, uh, the last speech given by, by Kimmy mm -hmm. Avery, new to Toastmasters. I know she's a seasoned speaker, right. but I was just amazed by the way she, she spoke, and I think it was, it was a great show. It was nice having these two speakers today. Yeah, and I'm looking forward to seeing their impact in the world as they go out and spread these messages about, uh, about finding common ground and connecting with each other in, in very real ways. I think uh, part of the issue in society, from my perspective, is that I think there's a fear of, of real intimacy where we get to be vulnerable with each other and talk about our fears and, and, and what's really important to us right. in a non-threatening sort of way. No, I agree. I think we should look for ways that we can bridge these gaps and overcome our differences, which is most important because at the end, we're talking about humanity. It's not about the different uh, sides that we're taking, but yes. coming together. Exactly. Well, thank you. It's been great being with you on it's the show again. Here. It's time to Thanks. wrap it up. All right. That's our show. Thank you for joining us on this edition of Toastmaster Time. We tape our show live in the San Francisco Bay Area. And if you'd like more information about our show, you can visit us on the web at toastmastertime.com. We're sponsored by Toastmasters District 57. And to learn more about them, you can visit them at d57tm.org. To learn about Toastmasters International, visit us on the web at www.toastmasters.org. You can even type in your zip code and find a club near you. On behalf of all of the wonderful staff and volunteers here at the Media Center in Palo Alto where we tape our show, I'd like to say thank you again to our guests, to Steve Today and Kimmy Avery, to our evaluator Adrian Chauffeur, and to all of the wonderful people here. Thank you all for watching us at Toastmaster Time. And we invite you to keep talking. <laughs>